Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a video about uh, churning or travel hacking or credit card hacking, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of people have been discussing it recently because there's been that Netflix uh, show explained about money and they talk about credit cards quite a bit. So I actually partake in it. I do a little bit of it, not super aggressively. So we're going to go over what it is, how do you get free vacations, how do you get points, how do you figure it all out and what are the downfalls of it. So if you like these videos, um, please like, comment and subscribe. Uh, I hope to see you again. And if you've lasted this far, then let's get into it. So travel hacking slash credit card churning. Okay, so what is it exactly? So if you have a credit card, your credit card probably gives you points. Now there are different kinds of credit cards. There are different kinds of point system, which you do need to be aware of. So there is a little bit of work that needs to be done. You obviously need to research a little bit to better understand what is your goal. So what are you looking to do? Are you looking for hotels? Are you looking for uh, flights? Are you looking for uh, business class or first class flights? Where are you going? Okay, so domestic versus international. Lots of things to think of, right? You can't just start accumulating any and all kinds of points. So the basis behind it is that all credit cards give you points, but the vast majority of points are earned via credit card signups. So when you get a brand new card. Okay, so you might have something like spend... Uh, $3,000 in three months and then you'll get something like 30,000 points or so okay um, that 30,000 points can be worth different things depending on the point system it is but let's say it's about $300 or so depending on which ones you use now you can take those points and you can transfer them to different aeroplan or air airline companies, right? You can do different transfers. There are different deals. Sometimes they'll have pop-up deals as well. So you'll get a 20% top-up if you transfer your points from company A to company B. So the basis behind it is instead of just having opening up a credit card and using it for months or years, you are continually opening up new credit cards in order to maximize the sign-up bonus that you get. So this is what you're really looking for, it's the sign-up bonus itself. So you're obviously thinking, okay, what about my credit score? Credit score. So obviously your credit score fluctuates, okay? So your credit score is going to change. So what you want to do is realize that it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. So you cannot go about opening up five cards in a month. Okay, maybe if you want to, if you're willing to take that risk tolerance, sure. What you would rather want to do, and it really depends on um, your risk tolerance, your expenditures as well, right? So if you have more money to spend, you could probably open up more cards. But maybe you want to do like one card a month, maybe a month, maybe a quarter, okay? So you're opening up a few every, every year. If you have multiple people, so if you have a spouse, maybe parents, okay, something like that, you can get in additional players into the game. So what that means then is a lot of times you can refer one to another, okay, and then both of you can get extra points. Okay, so your credit card is going to be affected. I'm not going to say it's not going to be affected. It is going to be affected. But the important thing is that your credit card score is not just a one moment in time. It is always changing. It is always moving. So you might see that maybe you're starting at about 750. Okay, you open up a card, it might decrease. Then it might increase again and decrease and increase and then decrease a lot and then increase a lot, right? So it's, it's always changing. So you do wanna make sure that you are keeping track, okay? And this isn't only for the your credit score, but also for your cards in general, because as you have more and more cards, you're going to have to, number one, pay off everything. This is very important, okay? So do not go into the credit card turning game 
if you are an overspender or if you have problems keeping track, you definitely need to keep track. So number one, pay off everything. Number two, you need to uh, know or remind yourself when fees hit. So like annual fees, for example. Okay, you also need to know and remember um, which credit cards you need in order to get whatever your goal is. So you need to research credit cards. Okay, so for example, uh, here in Canada, we have, I can't even spell cards, there we go. Okay, so are you looking for Aeroplan? Are you looking for Alaska? Okay, are you looking for hotel cards like the Marion or Best Western? Okay, are you looking for just cards that you can uh, credit for things like Airbnb? So you, you buy the ticket and then you just credit it. So you can use things like Scotia. Okay, you can also use RBC. There's also Amex cards. Now, a lot of these cards as well, the points can be transferred to and from different ones. So for example, the Amex, you can take your points, let's say for example, you have uh, 30K in points, okay? You can either use it as a $300 credit onto your account, or you can transfer it and have 30K to Aeroplan. Okay, that's something else to take into consideration. So you can't just go about opening cards willy-nilly. You need to know what is your goal. Okay, what airlines fly there or what do you have available? What cards can be transferred to those airline points? You need to ensure that you are able to hit the minimum spend. So a lot of times you're looking at something like $3,000 in three months. That's one on average. Can you get additional people into the game? So do you have a spouse or parents that you can refer to and from, okay? Um, and then what happens? So you get the card, you hit the minimum spend, okay? And you get all of your bonus points. What do you do after that? So in order to ensure that you're not blacklisted, okay? You want to ensure that you keep your account open. A general rule is about six months, okay? Some people are more or less aggressive with this. So you keep your account open for about six months and then you can either close it, which closing the card will affect your credit score again, okay? So you can close it or you can actually do a switch to a no fee card. You can do a switch to a no fee card. So this will ensure that your credit file stays open, okay? You still have that card and that number, but now instead of having a more expensive card, you now have a free card that you can keep open essentially for forever, okay? Because you won't have any fees associated with it. So what you can do is, you know, you can find out what banks work for you, what trips are you planning, etc. And then you can open and then make the minimum spend, use the points and then close or switch the card as well. You definitely need to be more type A as opposed to less, okay? So you do need to keep track. So keep track of your expenditures. Very easy for you to buy things just for the sake of hitting the minimum spend. So keep track of your expenditures. Keep track of your annual fees. Keep track of your minimum payments, okay? Keep track as well of any deals or promotions or deadlines. And I also want to emphasize with annual fees, a lot of times cards will have uh, first year free or they'll have a waiver if you have uh, a checking account, for example. There are a lot of cards that you can get for little to no fees, but do understand that generally speaking, you do need to pay for some annual fees. That's just the name of the game. So you won't ever get travel for completely free, but you'll, you can get it at a deep, deep, deep discount. Okay. So, you know, let's say you open up five cards hypothetically, and you're able to get the flight for free and you're able to get the hotel for free. You probably would have spent maybe a few hundred dollars on annual fees. Um, maybe also a few hundred dollars on some taxes that you can't get covered by the fees as well. Uh, so you're still going to be paying. It's just at a major, major discount. 
And as well, what you can get is you can get a lot of really good first class flights. So instead of spending maybe like 20K for an economy flight, some people would say, well, I'd rather just spend 40K for the first class, depending obviously on the flight itself. It, it varies where you want to go and what the airlines is as well. So if you are new, a few things that I can recommend uh, to make this a little bit easier is number one, know your credit score. I'm running out of room here. Know your credit score. Have a plan. Okay, so plan. The more time in advance, the better. Okay, you can't really start doing this thinking that you want to do something in the next month or two. Usually more time is a little bit better. So know your credit score. Have a plan. Keep track. And research. Okay, so I would recommend for you to research before you go about opening up a bunch of carts because you might find out hey, a card you thought could be transferred to this airline actually can't because it's like a subset of a card. Um, so there's a lot of online forums that you can use. There's tons of different websites of people who do this for a living. Um, so it's called churning or points hacking or travel hacking. And really the basis of it is to get travel for little to no, um, I guess, very low cost relative to the travel itself. Uh, so it definitely takes some time, definitely takes a lot of learning. Uh, I have used this to my benefit. I've traveled a little bit, not a whole bunch, but I've traveled a fair bit. Um, I went out west and was able to cover the entire Airbnb as well as the entire flight. I took economy there and I took first class back, which was very nice to sleep uh, overnight. So that saved me um, probably $1,500, right, out of pocket. Um, I also have a few other trips being planned, which I've paid um, very little for using points again. You can also get really good deals and discounts, right? So if you have this credit card, you're able to get your first luggage checked for free. You're able to get an upgrade with cars or hotels. You're able to uh, get certain deals when it comes to, I don't know, like grocery stores and things that aren't necessarily travel related either. So this is a high level as to travel hacking and credit card turning. I hope you learn something new. Uh, if you like short introductions and getting to the point, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or if you want a more detailed look, I can definitely go into it. This is my French homework that I messed up. <laughs> please ignore that. Um, but I can go into further detail about what is it and how it works as well uh, and the different airlines that you can use. Um, obviously Canadian based, not so much US based. The US has way more options than we do. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new and I hope to see you in a future video as well. Bye everyone. Take care.